now we are getting a chance to learn even more about former New York Giants head coach. This man was hired as a head coach of an NFL program. And we all know how the head coaching cycle goes nowadays with the hiring, the interviews, who gets picked, how people get picked. Are they a guru? Are they incredibly high football IQ? How's the resume? Everything that allegedly goes into the process. This guy somehow became the head coach of the New York football giants when Eli fucking Manning was their quarterback, who's a Hall of Famer. He actually benched Eli Manning for Geno Smith, West Virginia guy, not a good spot to go in for Geno Smith. They almost lost their entire fan base. He inevitably puts Eli back, gets fired. Eli goes back. Now, he's back in the NFL. Offense coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. And he did a press conference earlier today. His hair looked fantastic, and his words were majestic. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben McAdoo. And you look at Sam as your starting quarterback? Sam is our starting quarterback, yes. One minute, 37 seconds later. You know, one of the things I've been working on is being better talking to you people. So, you know, announcing the starting quarterback here, I just put my foot in the mouth. So I, that wasn't something I should have said. And you look at Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that legend. That is amazing. Listen. Somebody just gave me a wave in the back of the room. <laughs> yeah. and it was like, Sam Darnold's a starting quarterback? Get the fuck out of here. Uh, one thing I've been trying to work on. <laughs> what a series of events. That's a Western Pennsylvania guy there, McAdoo. Yeah. And things like this, with the way his name is, okay? The way it's pronounced, little c, big A. Uh, you know, that is kind of the Scottish accent uh, of the way it's pronounced. It's not Mick, like others would say, because it's a a vowel immediately after, uh, or a letter, a capital letter immediately after. I believe it's for, you get whatever the case. Macadoofus, people say. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. All right, that's what people say about this guy because they kind of have to whenever things like this happen, and he says stuff like that. Now, does that mean his football IQ is bad, AJ? Because every time he speaks, it sounds like an idiot speaking? Or is it just whenever he's speaking publicly, he's not comfortable doing so, so we should give him a little bit more of a balance of like, hey, this guy's an idiot, you know, like a lot of people think. <laughs> which I don't, but I think a lot of people do. Uh, you might have to give him a, a little bit of leeway, I guess. I don't know. I mean, his hair looks great, if nothing else. Like, hey, at oh, least yeah. my hair looks legit, right? Great. And who was telling him not to announce Sam Darnold as a starter? Was that the business people who are trying to trade for somebody? Why does that right matter, now? though? Does that matter? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, is it because of trade? They want to the trade stuff. They still want to talk about that. Is it because another quarterback that's there? They want to maybe make them think that they can compete for it. Who was the one that told him, like... You fucking. <laughs> you know, who did that? That is, what this is I why. That's why we don't see coaches speak that often. We only see head coaches. Yeah, not everybody's polished. You know, people have to speak like once a, a week. A lot of coaches don't like. You know, you know a ton of the majority of coaches do not want to speak to the media. Now, I think that's changing with like the younger people coming into the league, but the old guard, like they have no desire usually to speak to the media. I think the younger coaches understand the value of like being liked as a person. That's huge. And you're also recruiting the whole time, too, for yes. potential job people that could hire you and also players. Like, hey, I remember seeing that guy. Like, he seems cool in interviews, and all of a sudden he's a head coach someday. Yeah, it's not just for the fans. It's also, like, professionally as well. Other coaches wanting to come coach with you in your place. I've had coaches text me after listening to a coach on this show saying, hey, I would love to go coach with that guy right there with how he acts on your show and the conversation he has. But players, that's a big time in free agency now that it feels like it's a recruiting era. I forget who said it. It might have been, was it, it was maybe somebody on the internet, maybe somebody here. Might have been in text with Coach JB that me and AJ Hawk <laughs> are in. I forget, but people are viewing like the free agency thing almost as the transfer portal. Like if guys don't like where they're at, they don't like where the money's at, they're like, all right, I want out of here. I'm going to keep it moving. And that's the transfer portal model where, you know, you get a scholarship to a place. You don't like the way it's going for whatever reason. It might be personal reasons. You don't like the coach. It might have been that you were lied to. Happens a lot in recruiting. Might have been that you're not playing. Whatever the reason, you just decide, oh, I'm going to get up and I'm going to leave. Where in the past, people would have to battle through that, kind of live through the suck that they have, maybe battle, maybe find out it's not for them or whatever. It's kind of an evolving situation for certain, no matter how you view it. But that is interesting that now it feels like players are able to say and pick and choose where they want to be and how they want to be. Now, whenever you announce for a trade and it doesn't work out, are you on the wrong end of it? Like the guys that are sitting in the transfer portal. For instance, Baker Mayfield, whenever he said, uh, I want to be traded, and then the Browns come out and say, uh, excuse me, you, we don't care.
And then him saying, no, I want to be traded. Uh, they think we have gone too far. We don't think the relationship is mendable. And the Browns come out again and say, hey, who, ha, who, we don't care. Okay, we are not trading you. Then they sign a guy to $230 million guaranteed the next day at the same position. And then they follow up saying we might need him to be there. It's just like, I think there's upside to it. And I think there's downside to it. There's a lot of dudes sitting in transfer portal. And like, at what point do you think guys know who be, can be who they uh, can afford to be, know whether or not they can be the one demanding the trade in the new deal and everything like that? It's a, it's a weird situation. Kyler with the Cardinals, weird situation. There's just a lot of that. Well, you, you got to it right there at the end when you said be who you can afford to be. That's, that's so true. It's something you always say. You got to know if you have some leverage. You can't be demanding a trade if there's not a whole lot of demand for your services. So, like, that's just... There's different ways to go about it. I don't know what's right or wrong ever, but what the hell is going to happen to Baker Mayfield and where is he going to play? And is he going to be a starter? Well, that's why the McAdoo thing is interesting because he said Sam's going to be our starter. So that would make mm. us feel like, okay, so they're out on Baker Mayfield because yeah. they already got Sam's contract. Because they Well, no, either way, though, it'd be fine to say Sam's a starter and they still all of a sudden they acquire Baker and like, well, things have changed. Yeah, so. we lied. What do you fuck? Who cares? Accumulation. That's what we do all the fucking time, dude. People yeah. lie all the time. Because what is happening right now is not the same as what's going to be happening two weeks from now. The world changes, game changes, and we feel like different things happen behind the scenes that nobody knows that make us tell you that although we said with absolute certainty just three days ago that this thing would happen, it is certainly not happening now with new evidence that made us think, oh, this is a fucking terrible decision. But that happens all the time in these press conferences. Never have we seen it one minute and 30 seconds, or 37 <laughs> no. seconds. Later, you know, never. Have when did he know? That. When did he realize? I, there had. To be, I wish we could see the full clip because obviously that just came across our timeline, and we fucking, you know, as soon as we see that, we can't help. Everybody laughed. It was probably the PR yeah, yes. person. You know, like you, you talk about the Colts PR people. The PR person, I'm sure, was talking to Ben before he got up there. Hey, you know, they're probably gonna hit you about this. Talk about this. You know, just just so you have an idea. And then McAdoo probably looked over and saw their PR person. The person just kind of looking right at him, like, all right, well. <laughs> Was that at the very beginning of the of the thing too? What if, what if he was writing notes and holding up signs? Yeah. What if what if he looked over there, and there was just a, uh, just that like holding up the, and then McAdoo's like giving an answer, get McAdoo's giving an answer, and he's like, what? And they're like, hold on. <laughs> right a whole nother thing starter <laughs> yeah. not start like holding up in the back of the room and then how do they relay the message to him because do we see him look off camera in this yeah, press conference see. or is it him actually remembering mm -hmm. in an while he's giving an answer that oh fuck i've already told them who the starting quarterback is because he might have been in like a i want everybody to compete I want everybody to feel as if they're the starter and then at all positions you know that's why you know Fuck, I already told him Sam Donald's the yeah. Did that happen or did somebody have to tell him? I'm intrigued by that. because I, that, think, it, I think in his own head he realized it. Uh, maybe, who knows. All right. He had to know coming in they are going to ask a lot of questions about the quarterback position. Yeah, and McAdoo said, do you see this hair, baby? I'm going to come slinging in there. All right, I'm going to be slinging. Look at that guy. Wow. Sure. What flow.